Welcome to God is One and Possesses True Unity from The Guide for the Perplexed by Maimonides, Vegetarian, Part 2 of 2 on Words of Wisdom. Maimonides, also known as Ha Rambam or Rabbi Moses ben Maimon, was a notable medieval Jewish philosopher, astronomer, physician, and intellectual figure. Born into a prominent family in Spain, Maimonides' path eventually led him to Morocco and Palestine, until he finally settled in Egypt, in Al Fostad, near Cairo. Shortly after moving to Egypt, life-changing events prompted him to start his practice as a physician. It was not long before Maimonides became renowned in the area and became the personal physician to the Sultan Saladin, a famous Muslim military leader. He also tended to other patients, lectured before fellow physicians, and became a leader of the Jewish community, teaching and helping its members. Famous works by Maimonides include Mishneh Torah, a commentary on the Talmud, and The Guide for the Perplexed, philosophical discussions regarding theological matters. A revered pillar of the Jewish world, Rabbi Moses ben Maimon also had a significant influence on some great medieval writers and thinkers, such as Baruch Spinoza and Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, and made an important impact on the medical science archives. Today, we will continue with excerpts from part one, chapter 53, in Rabbi Moses ben Maimon's book, The Guide for the Perplexed, where the rabbi details how we can know more in depth about God. Chapter 53. The circumstance which caused men to believe in the existence of divine attributes is similar to that which caused others to believe in the corporeality of God. The latter have not arrived at that belief by speculation, but by following the literal sense of certain passages in the Bible. The same is the case with the attributes. When in the books of the prophets and of the law, God is described by attributes, such passages are taken in their literal sense, and it is then believed that God possesses attributes, as if he were to be exalted above corporeality and not above things connected with corporeality, i.e. the accidents, I mean psychical dispositions, all of which are qualities, and connected with corporeality. Every attribute which the followers of this doctrine assume to be essential to the Creator, you will find to express, although they do not distinctly say so, a quality similar to those which they are accustomed to notice in the bodies of all living beings. We apply to all such passages the principle, the Torah speaketh in the language of man, and say that the object of all these terms is to describe God as the most perfect being, not as possessing those qualities which are only perfections in relation to created living beings. Many of the attributes express different acts of God, but that difference does not necessitate any difference as regards him from whom the acts proceed. This fact, namely, that from one agency different effects may result, although that agency has not free will, and much more so if it has free will, I will illustrate by an instance taken from our own sphere. Fire melts certain things and makes others hard. It boils and burns. It bleaches and blackens. If we describe the fire as bleaching, blackening, burning, boiling, hardening, and melting, we should be correct. And yet, he who does not know the nature of fire would think that it included six different elements, one by which it blackens, another by which it bleaches, a third by which it boils, a fourth by which it consumes, a fifth by which it melts, a sixth by which it hardens things, actions which are opposed to one another and of which each has its peculiar property. He, however, who knows the nature of fire, will know that by virtue of one quality in action, namely by heat, it produces all these effects. If this is the case with that which is done by nature, how much more is it the case with regard to beings that act by free will, and still more with regard to God, who is above all description.
If we, therefore, perceive in God certain relations of various kinds, for wisdom in us is different from power, and power from will, it does by no means follow that different elements are really contained in him, that he contains one element by which he knows, another by which he wills, and another by which he exercises power, as is in fact the signification of the attributes of God according to the attributists. The attributes found in Holy Scripture are either qualifications of his actions without any reference to his essence, or indicate absolute perfection, but do not imply that the essence of God is a compound of various elements. For in not admitting the term compound, they do not reject the idea of a compound when they admit a substance with attributes. There still remains one difficulty which led them to that error, and which I am now going to mention. Those who assert the existence of the attributes do not found their opinion on the variety of God's actions. They say it is true that one substance can be the source of various effects, but his essential attributes cannot be qualifications of his actions, because it is impossible to imagine that the Creator created himself. They vary with regard to the so-called essential attributes, I mean as regards their number, according to the text of the scripture which each of them follows. I will enumerate those on which all agree, and the knowledge of which they believe that they have derived from reasoning, not from some words of the prophets, namely the following four, life, power, wisdom, and will. They believe that these are four different things, and such perfections as cannot possibly be absent from the Creator, and that these cannot be qualifications of His actions. This is their opinion. But you must know that wisdom and life in reference to God are not different from each other. For in every being that is conscious of itself, life and wisdom are the same thing. That is to say, if by wisdom we understand the consciousness of self. Besides, the subject and the object of that consciousness are undoubtedly identical as regards God. For according to our opinion, he is not composed of an element that apprehends and another that does not apprehend. He is not like man, who is a combination of a conscious soul and an unconscious body. Therefore, we, who truly believe in the unity of God, declare that as we do not believe that some element is included in his essence by which he created the heavens, another by which he created the four elements, a third by which he created the ideals, in the same way we reject the idea that his essence contains an element by which he has power, another element by which he has will, and a third by which he has a knowledge of his creatures. On the contrary, He is a simple essence, without any additional element whatever. He created the universe and knows it, but not by any extraneous force. There is no difference whether these various attributes refer to his actions or to relations between him and his works. In fact, these relations, as we have also shown, exist only in the thoughts of men. Elated viewers, we are delighted that you have joined us for today's Words of Wisdom.